Hello, my name is Kyle Sundgren. I am a straight ally for the gay community. I am in the midst of making and editing a documentary, uh, kind of a dream project of mine. Uh, I go around, interview people from the gay community, let them tell their tale, and in the process, educate people that may not understand or necessarily accept the gay community. Because my theory is, if you just got to know a gay person, you'd realize there's nothing to be afraid of. So what I've done so far is with a friend of mine, we spent uh, about a week and a half in Los Angeles and we interviewed 10, 12 people from the gay community and we let them tell their tale. The goal is give people a taste, see what we're trying to do, and hopefully raise more money donation-wise to do this documentary across all of America, not just Los Angeles. As accepting as California is, there's a little bit of struggle, certainly with the gay community, but it's got to be 10 times worse in a place like Alabama or anywhere in the South. So I'd love to get those tales out on this documentary. Make it feature length. There will be a link somewhere uh, in the frame. I don't know where, so I'll just point everywhere. And it'll just, uh, if you like what you see, if you'd like to see it expanded out, donate what you can. Anything would help. I promise you it'll help. And um, hope you like what you see. Thank you for watching. Is being gay a choice? Of course not. <laughs> no. No, it's not a choice. It's something, it's part of who you are. You, you know, do straight people choose to be straight? <laughs> when did you uh, know that you were gay? When I was little. When I was a kid. Do you remember, like, your first uh, male crush? Or yeah, my cousins had, one of my cousins had a boyfriend. And he was just the coolest thing. He was so, so cute and hot, and I was like four. And I was just, I remember going, God, he's really good looking. My younger years, I was kind of like, you know, you'd see like a Superman on TV or whatever, you, you know, you'd see um, like your soccer coach or whatever, and you, you know, you kind of have like funny feelings. It's like, oh, I really admire this guy, he's really neat. I want to I want to hang around him, I want to be by him, I want to ask him a lot of questions. And, and as time progressed, maybe in my early 20s is when I figured it out. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm gay. <laughs> so, uh, what is your coming out story? I don't really have one because I'm kind of weird. I, <clears throat> oh, I dated a guy in high school. I was uh, played rugby. I grew up in Australia, yeah. and I played rugby. And I started dating a guy in ninth grade, maybe. And we dated. It wasn't really a secret. I would go to school with hickeys. I wasn't hanging out with girls. He went to my school. It started off, I mean, it started off with me kind of admitting to myself, um, driving around in my truck one, one, one day about 10 years ago, uh, and I just had music blaring and I, was, I told myself, I'm, I'm gay, <laughs> I'm, I'm gay. Some people think um, since two men uh, or two women can't naturally make a baby together, uh, that gay people need to recruit young people and turn them gay to further the gay population. Um, is that a fact, and uh, is that on the gay agenda? There's no gay agenda, for one. There's no such thing as a gay agenda. Where there's no mobilizing force of gayness in this world. But, um, no, it, to people that say that, I always say, well, could someone make you gay? The answer is obviously no. You can't make anybody be sexually attracted to anything. It's like somewhat a bunch of bestialists saying, hey, we can really get you into horses. No, you actually can't. <laughs> Uh, no, that's that, that's crazy. Um, it's never been a thought inside my head, and I think out of all the several, you know, hundreds of other gay men that I know, gay men and women that I know, have never thought. So after we're done shopping, let's just go recruit some kids and just make them homosexuals and make their parents mad at them. Why is marriage important? I shouldn't have to settle for. Well, you can have these rights, but we're going to save these for, for heterosexuals. No, just run along and be happy with your rights. Leave me alone. No, no, I'm a human being. Do you have um, any personal stories or maybe know of a story from someone else of uh, being bullied or discriminated against? Oh, of course. I got, even when I was with my first boyfriend, because I was a big guy playing rugby, I didn't get bullied. He did. And someone called him a faggot in class. And... The teacher busted him for talking, and he was like, they just called me a faggot, sir. And the teacher went, you are a faggot. No. <laughs> and he left the class, and he didn't come back to that class. And But there was no sensitivity training, so it was just like, okay, we'll get you a different science class. I do know that, yeah, a, a couple of friends of ours uh, was discriminated against recently at a restaurant where it was about 2.30 in the morning. And uh, 
One of them goes to kiss one of the other one on the forehead, and then the manager of the restaurant comes up to them and informs them that this is a family restaurant and not a gay place. And, you know, there was nobody in the restaurant at the time because it was 2.30 in the morning and they were hungry after the bars. And even though it was, it was relatively minor in the grand scheme of things, that's like, oh my god, that hits home. That happened here in Los Angeles. If you could deliver any message to the currently unaccepting straight community, what would you say? I don't know why anybody who isn't gay gives a shit about gay people. Because where someone puts their genitals or does with their genitals is so immaterial in how you relate to people that I've, I'm constantly flabbergasted, especially in America, that people seem to give so much of a damn about what gay people do. We drive cars like you, we walk just like you, <laughs> we eat the same foods as you, we have the same jobs as you, we're just like you.